you know, weddings, get togethers, family reunions, things of that nature. It tends to be a place where a lot of families that consume some uh, adult beverages, usually it, it stays somewhat under control. And today we've got a story of what sounds like a drunk sister who showed up drunk at her wedding and decided to make a scene. Yeah, it's something that uh, maybe not is so forgivable. We'll see if she's able to do so today on My Crazy Family. My. My. Crazy. Crazy. Family. Family. My. Crazy. Family. Welcome to the program. Be sure to press subscribe wherever you download podcasts. Leave us a review there on Apple Podcasts and share your crazy family stories with us. You can write in on the website, crazyfampod.com. The uh, slot is right there for you to uh, fill up the form and share your story with us completely anonymously. Your call 833-CRAY-FAM. That's 833-272-9326 to share your family's crazy stories with us. Uh, I even got a chance right now for you to win a uh, $500 Amazon gift card, right? Yeah, and actually, this is really cool. All you need to do is leave us a review. It would be great if it was a nice review. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Take a screenshot of that review and then send it to contest at crazyfampod.com. And we're going to be drawing that, I'm assuming, right before the end of the year. So you can you know, spend it however you'd like on Christmas presents, Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, whatever works for you. Airline tickets to get far away from your family, something that like that. too. Gas, yeah, whatever you need. Therapy, yeah. therapy that would cover a couple sessions. So, oh, you know, depending, there's a lot of really good online therapists that charge like a hundred bucks. So that's five sessions. There you go. <laughs> that would be great. We give away that. It will be a fun one sometime. We're giving away therapy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, there's wow. There is a sponsorship idea. Better health. <laughs> I love it. Well, that's down the road. That's on the list. Ah, yeah. So lots of craziness uh, on uh, today's episode of the program. Let's jump into it. Well, our first one, I'm I'm going to share a little personal story as well, because I can relate to this just a little bit. The first story says, I called my mom for her birthday today to see how her day went. I had a long work day where I was swamped. I didn't get a chance earlier to call her. So I called this evening. First of all, I can't stand silence over the phone, so I'll randomly spout off topics and talk to fill the empty space instead of just ending the call. Mm -hmm. Well, my mom and I don't have the best relationship. She has no filter and can and does say mean things sometimes. She's very judgmental and can be rude. She's 55, but even at a younger age, she was like this. And even with this, we talk on the phone a few times a week for 30 minutes to an hour Not every time, but sometimes I feel like, why did I call or why did I answer her call if I know she's going to get in her jabs about how she doesn't agree with my lifestyle? Yep, It's like she's pushing to see if I fight back. I don't always stand up for myself, but sometimes I do when I think she needs to be put in her place. If I get off the phone and feel worse after talking to her, the big question is, why do I do it? Yeah. Hi. Oh my God. Do I understand that? I, my mom and I have, we had a great relationship when I was younger Mm -hmm. and we've really fallen, fallen, fallen apart in the last probably eight, nine, 10 years. And I see a text from her or I see a call and immediately I just get this lump in my, in the pit of my stomach. And it's like, do I even want to engage with her? Uh So I totally get how this person feels. Yeah, and then they wonder, like, why don't you want to? Why don't you talk more? Why don't we? <laughs> because every time we talk, you just criticize everything I say or do, and it's just, yeah, it, it's maddening, and it seems to. It's not necessarily something that you can change, um, because you're. I mean, you're just expressing and sharing stories of your life, so you can make some things off topic or or, or off limits uh, of what you're going to talk about and set those bounds, which is the right thing to do. But at some point you're like, what, what do we have to talk about? If you know? Yeah. And you know, I'll tell you that over the weekend, I got, um, a text from my mom. Um, I had posted and I'm, I'm, when we were in radio, we were forced to be on Facebook several times a day to interact with the listeners. So I've tried to pull back on Facebook as much as I can. Mm -hmm. 
Um, just for personal reasons. And, but I, I've recently gone hiking and things and I've posted pictures of these beautiful places that I was hiking. And my mom sends a text Saturday morning. Like she's in, she's an hour ahead of me. So it arrived in my, on my phone at like seven 30 and it said, honey, I'd like to talk to you. I'm really concerned about you. I've seen all your pictures on Facebook and it looks like you're alone. And I just want to know if you're okay. Looks like you're alone. You're hiking. <laughs> I'm first of all, I'm, I was with my husband. Yeah. He really hates social media. So I'm not going to post a picture of him. Sure. That's just not, sure. it's not his thing. He's a very private individual and I'm not going to post somebody's picture that doesn't want to be on, yeah. on Facebook. But what I've posted was these beautiful creeks and rivers and rock formations and just the most gorgeous things you've ever seen. And, and that's how she takes it is that I'm alone and somehow just wandering off in the wilderness, like ready to jump off a cliff. <laughs> I, I was really... so pissed after that interaction because first of all, she's like 83 maybe. Yeah. And she doesn't use Facebook very well. So I think she thinks that I posted that for her to see. Okay. Because she gets email notifications. So she when thinks I post. it's just to her. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm like, no, I, I said I was out hiking and I wasn't alone. And, but what a negative way to look at it instead of, <laughs> Hey, that's a gorgeous thing. Where were you? <laughs> exactly. You know, some people's filters just automatically, they take sunshine, rainbows and butterflies and turn them into poop. <laughs> Literally because it was a beautiful sunny day and yeah. I was at one of the most beautiful places I'd been to in a long time. And I, all I did was just post a picture and said, I found some nature today. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> I didn't give a whole description of what I had done that day. I didn't, I didn't feel I needed to, but apparently I did because uh, I'm out in the wilderness wandering by myself and you know, I, I need help. Even if you, even if you were by yourself, that's a healthy, lovely thing to do. Go out for a walk and hike. And that's, that's healthy. That's good. That's not, yeah, I don't get, yeah, I hear you. I completely hear you. I, uh, I recently had some interactions where, um, involving discussion I, and I've avoided talking about it because I knew what I was going to get, uh, cause they won't agree. And then they're just going to tell me all the things they've already thought about 50 times. And I just want you to think about this. I already did. I'm an adult, 40 years old. Uh, I've managed pretty well so far. So uh, Harper, we're doing um, a, a charter homeschool is what we're doing this year. Oh, yeah. Um, and she started going to regular school. Really wasn't a good fit for her. It never really has been a good fit for her. Um, she's uh, really, she's bored as hell. She blazes through everything right away, gets good grades, and just honestly doesn't relate very well to kids her age. Uh, but I get it. I was Which the, is okay, yeah, by the that's way. That's fine. That means you're smart. That means you're more advanced. And and I was the exact same way. So I get exactly what she's going through. And then this other option kind of came up where it's it, it's it's actually run by uh, part of the state. Um, but it's more advanced, more one on one. Um, she can knock out all of her schoolwork as it comes at her, which takes her all of like. 40 minutes a day as opposed to sitting there for eight hours. And then I can use that time with her to do other things and teach her other things that she's interested in. So we, I got her sign up for some other classes and stuff outside of school to occupy those hours and get her into more things rather than just sit there and wait for every other child to get done with their stuff. Um, I was the same way. And to me, it's a very positive thing. She's very happy, very excited about it. Uh, has been loving it uh, since we've been doing it. And it's all good on this end. And we're seeing all the reasons and positives. And we talked about it before we made this decision. And it wasn't just like a rash thing. Um, yeah. And and I get it. So I and I listen to her when I when she expresses concerns about this or that. And it's not her that's just making the decision. Um, so, of course, uh, uh, why is Harper with you? It was like 2.30 and we're at the grocery store. I'm like, oh, yeah, well, she's doing uh, a homeschool thing this year. What about what about socialization? What about the other kids? I said, oh, she's getting involved in other stuff. In fact, she has a field trip this weekend we're going on. Um, and they do. They have things where the kids get together. And it was all, and I was trying to explain, you know, 
Here's why we're doing it. And number one, she should know because I've already had these conversations with her before. Yeah. But every time it's like new news and it's just met with a lot of quiet, a lot of kind of passive aggressive. Well, I just think you should think of that. Okay. Okay. Well, I'll let you go. Never like, oh, that's a good idea. That's a, you know, I, I hope and it's met with, well, I hope that works out well. It's like very like, passive aggressive. <laughs> like, I hope that works out well. No, you don't. You hope it fails so you can say that you're right is what it yes. feels like. Um, and it's like, and then what? And then what? You were right? Why would you want to be right? Why would you want to be right in that situation of saying that this won't work? And it, it, why? Just so you can say that when like, yeah, because it means, I mean, really, it means I mean, everything's that, not working that well. Narcissistic personality. They, they don't care about, you know, the fire that's left behind them. They care that they were right, that there was going to be a fire. Exactly. Like, no, that's not. And so I just, I don't talk about these things or avoid them because I know what I'm going to get and I don't get support where I should get support from a parent. And I've, I've learned to accept that and understand that, but it's still, you know, you still kind of search for it and hope it's there, but no matter what, it's just, it's not adequate or it's very passive aggressive. And if you bring it up and talk about it, that's not how I was. That's not what I was saying. I, I totally like, <laughs> no, whatever. Like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't want to talk about it with you. Just so draining. And after I, I interacted with, with my mom and those texts, I, I had, I woke up and I, I was feeling great until I looked at my phone and then I let that just bother me for yeah. hours. And and I sent it to a family member. I took some screenshots and sent it. And I'm like, what do you think of this? And it was like, right to the negative. Yeah. You know, it, it just if that's how some people are, is everything is just bad. And you almost have to convince them that something is good. Used Instead to of let's start from a neutral place and see what the situation is. It's it's always, no, this is horrible. And, you know. and it's interesting because it's not like everything in their lives is bad. Like I'll hear about things that they do and it's positive and they're having fun. But it seems like anytime I talk about things in my world, it's always just kind of like, look, let's look out for the caveats of every pitfall that could possibly happen and yeah. and scare you, which is what I grew up with. And I that's I took years to break away from that sort of thinking. Uh, but it's right there to remind you and smack you in the face uh, when you have those conversations to this day. And I swear it's getting worse with age. <laughs> yes, I can attest to that because I've been watching it. And that's that is one of the reasons that I distanced myself from my mom, which which really took a toll on me because I felt bad that here was this person who had instilled so much yeah, like good. independence and strength in me. And I was like distancing myself from her because she was negative. I know. It's and just, I understand when you get older that your body is breaking down. And yeah. I mean, my God, I'm, I'm experiencing that, you know, you yeah. wake up and go, Oh my God, why does that hurt now? Yeah. So I understand. And it's, it's tough, but I think also if you don't take time every day to look around and, and, and find something to be thankful for, because not every, every life situation is not everyone is horrible. Yeah. You can find some positive things. Like let's just say today is just the worst day ever. But look outside for me right now, the sun is shining mm -hmm. and it was raining recently. So this is this is a good thing to be thankful for. You can find something. Yeah. yeah. And I I just I, I'm such a sponge. If you're going to be a negative Nelly, I'll jump on that train in a heartbeat. So I yeah. got to watch that stuff and yeah. people who are negative and, and yeah. just always looking for the shit. I have to step away. I do too. I, I, I can't do it anymore. And I, it consumes me too quickly. And I, that's why I'd be very cautious about that because that sort of thinking, that way of life, uh, that's because that's the way it really is with a lot of people. And I, 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 I'm very easy to, to fall into it because it was kind of my groove for a while, but yeah. it's like, no, I don't like this. I don't want that. I don't want to be part of this. I, it consumes me too much, but yeah. What do we got going on here in the story? <laughs> this next one, this, this one hit me really hard and I, it's very short, but I think it's a really important one to throw out there. It says my parents constantly make fun of me for having a close relationship with my cat. He sleeps in my bed every night and follows me around when I get home from school. He loves snuggles and overall, he's just a sweetheart. 
My parents keep making jokes that I'm dating my cat and it's making me a bit uncomfortable. I just love my cat and I don't think that's weird. Now, (coughs) excuse me. This is a person who just adores their pet. What's the problem here? That, uh, that, I don't know I, what I would, there really is no problem. I think people who get really jealous about something like that or start, you know, pointing out this or that, it's one thing to make a, a quick joke here or there just to kind of break the ice. But if you're constantly on it, there's something more there for that person than just, you know, I made a joke. It's like, is there a jealousy going on here that, you know, you don't have a pet that you love or care about? Is there an emptiness in your life? It's something that they're filling that void with by, you know, making fun or trying to, you know, poke at somebody who's enjoying a a positive thing in life. Yeah. And there's something so wonderful about cats and, and dogs for that matter too. But you and I, we, we like cats. (laughs) pardon my coughing. Um, they, they are an amazing pet to have. And, and I even, um, looked up some things that, that cat owners, um, experience having a cat like it, they have proof that people who own cats have been reported to carry a lower risk for heart disease and stroke. They prevent allergies. I know Tony, you're allergic to your cat, Mm -hmm. but if you expose a child early on to, um, felines, you can actually help a child with uh, immunity and things like that. And they reduce feelings of loneliness. I think it's lovely that this person is enjoying their pet. Yeah. And they'll eat you if you die. So well, and there's also- that too. So, I mean, it's, it's the circle of life. Cats are a wonderful thing in that regard. They, they shit in a box, you know, you, mm-hmm. you don't have to let them outside. And if you die in your sleep, they will eat you. I and, mean, they'll, it, and they'll shit you out in the box. So you'll still yeah. end up in a box. And yeah, so they will. It, it, it's really it's a recycling program. They should have a little like recycling sticker branded on the side of them. <laughs> Absolutely. They are the most <laughs> wonderful pet. And, you know, fuck these parents. This is sorry. I'm, I get a little emotional about it. Mm-hmm. <coughs> about me. Uh, yeah, no, about someone that's. Uh, that's not keen on the, uh, the kitties keen on the kitties. There's a sentence <laughs> right there. Uh, and I, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't get it. Um, I, I do have, what, what about this? But what about this obsession? Tell me your thoughts on, on this with a cat. So yes, I have, uh, I have a cat, but, uh, he lives in the garage and it's a big garage. Uh, so it's, it's like an apartment, uh, that he lives in and he has, you know, water and food and places to look out the window. And he, frankly, I've tried taking, taking him outside on a leash. He hates it. Every uh, always hates it. Just wants to go back inside. He's very, very indoor cat. And, uh, I love to have him around the house, but again, I have allergies, so I'd like to breathe, but I do like having the cat. I see him all the time. My office is in the garage. So I see him. Sometimes I let him in here too. Uh, anyway, take good care of the cat. We love the cat. Cat's not alone. Uh, but every time my mother visits, um, it's always immediately, how's the cat? Where's the cat? Is And is the cat being fed? And I go on vacation. Who's taking care of the cat? Why? Uh, I'm an adult. I, I can take care of these things. And why do you need to know? <laughs> it's why, all, is, they, they, is your mom this big um, cat person? She, she does love cats. She doesn't have a cat anymore. Um, and I don't know why, because there's plenty of years left there. But I guess my dad said he doesn't want to have a cat, even though she does. So I guess they'd go with not having a cat. Um, they're easy. And she knows she's had cats her whole life. That's the only animal I had growing up was a cat. So they're great for going on vacation. But I don't want to leave it if we're going on vacation or something. They don't care. Give them enough food. They're good. <laughs> they, they, or just have somebody stop by yeah. like once while they're gone yeah. just to make sure everything's going okay. Well, there's excuses for that too. I don't want to ask my sister anymore to come out here because it's such a trip. And there's always like 500 reasons why she can't have a cat. But uh, the obsession on mine, almost more than me or my daughter of concern, is like a little unsettling because it's like, 
what is this? You know, do you want my cat? Are you trying to convince me to give you my cat? It's just kind of a lot of guilting and like, oh, God, I wish you could be in that. I wish that, that cat could be in the house. Yes, yeah, so do I. Uh, thank you for that. And what is yeah, your but point? the the cat is is properly cared for. It's not like yes. it's living out in a cold garage and you know it's snowing and it's cold. No, your cat is very well taken care of. It's heated and air conditioned. <laughs> and is, yeah, I wouldn't be talking to you if you yeah. were abusing your cat. I yeah. would not even be part of this podcast. Yeah. I'm. I'm a fucking veterinary technician. That that's no. Yeah, it's <laughs> I a, would not be dealing no. with you if you were somebody who didn't take good care of no, your pets. It's just like uh, I, I never know what to make of it, and I I just there there's more worry and concern I think sometimes for the cat than there is for the people. But well, like, I can get behind that. I'm all about it. I've been accused of loving my cats more than I love people, and I I just kind of pause and go. Maybe, <laughs> yeah, and, <laughs> maybe, and, and I get it I mean, to a certain extent, but it's 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 a constant judgment or questioning just basic duties of a pet ownership, as if I've never had a pet, or it's like I have. I live on a farm, I have many pets, and they're taken care of. And I've always yeah, had and it's, pets. It's not, you know, you you live on a farm, but you're also not eating your pets either, no, right? No, I'm not. No. Yeah, I. I mean, there was the Cocker Spaniel last Thanksgiving that was pretty good. Hey, now, but um, that's that's not the breed you want to go with for that, by the way. <laughs> you, is there a breed that you should go with for eating a dog? This is I do not want to get into that. <laughs> and, and how do you know the I know this? This is an interesting piece of uh, information <clears throat> here. I'd probably lose my veterinary license. But, um, you know, there there are societies that eat dog. Yeah. And I. I what, what, horribly disagree with with it. Yeah. What's the common um, breed? What like if somebody's do they do they breed them to eat them too? Yes, they do. Just like we do with cows. Oh gosh. So yeah, and it's it's really disturbing, and I have a hard time. Like I can't even look at the pictures. I'm like, oh god, I can't. So, but there's there's specific breeds that that tend to be meatier, juicier tender oh, God. tasty it, it's just horrible Bursting. but i mean i'm sure they're judging us too i mean in some societies cows are sacred yeah and we have restaurants where you can pull up in your car and get a piece of cow so yeah you know it's just it's it's really hard to pass judgment on other societies but but as somebody who grew up with a, a dog i really struggle yeah with that it's it's not something i'm used to or or care to think about but yeah it's um it's a thing. What and it's uh, hard to watch. Again, what uh, what breed are we talking about here? I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> Please don't make me say it. In case I was hungry later, and no, or the apocalypse I, I don't happens, want to say it. and I have it's, to eat one of the dogs. Well, and and here's another thing in in our country, the preferred dog to do medical studies on is a beagle. Okay. So that's a big one, and and that one just breaks my heart. I mean, I, I'm not a beagle fan. I think they're great dogs, but I could never own one because I, they're so food driven and the ones I've seen are just naughty, but it, it breaks my heart that there's a bunch of them sitting in, in kennels somewhere, you know, being tested on. So sure. it's, it's just hard, but ugh. yeah, I, okay. <laughs> I can't, I can't, you're going to make me cry. Beagle meat. Is, no. is Beagle one of them? No. Golden? Maybe. Maybe. Lab? No, not Goldens. You're going to make me say it, aren't you? I'm curious. I can, I can probably Google this too, but I'll get on a list and then I'll start getting ads like, what imported dog meat? Like, no, I was just looking it up. On there, the is, there is a society in, I think it's China, where they have a festival where Ooh. thousands of dogs are consumed oh every God. year. Yeah, it's <clears throat> it's bad. Dog but meat, again, but... we're not used to that. So we look at it and say it's horrible and bad. And it and it is. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. Oh, it Jesus. is bad. There's pictures. The lychee and dog meat festival. Yeah. Uh, is an annual festival held in Yulin. I don't know how to say it. China during a the summer solstice uh, in which festival go goers eat dog meat and lychees. Lychees is a fruit, isn't it? 
Uh, I think so, yeah. At least you got fruit in there. The festival began in 09. And so it's not even like this ancient thing that they're carrying on. Like it was brought up after 9 11 and spans about 10 oh, days yeah. during which thousands of dogs are reportedly consumed. The festival is drawing criticism internationally. I would imagine so. Oh, my well, God. And, and don't forget, a lot of these are, are strays or pets that um, may have been stolen. Ah. So it's. Yeah, it's just, it's not good. Dog meat by good. region. This is the thing on Wikipedia. Dog meat by region. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we are, we are not a country that does this, but there are many countries that actually do consume dog meat. Yeah. They do. In this country, you would, you would be charged with a crime. I get, I mean, I mean it, it's different cultures, different things where it's a norm. It just has never yeah. been a norm in our world, in our area. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, it's something I would not participate in if I was curious. But uh, mm -mm. no. Oh, God, no. No, you no. Mm -mm. You couldn't. No. <laughs> just a taste. Just a little. <laughs> oh, I am disturbed no. by the amount of pictures on Wikipedia. <laughs> See, I can't. I can't even look. I, I can't. I just I look into their eyes and I it just breaks my soul hey, to buddy. see that so buddy look at this picture look at this plate of meat can't <laughs> yeah that's uh he doesn't even like looking at it a little, little uh balsamic on there and my God. i can't tell what breed these are because they're all shaved but... oh god okay okay next story <laughs> continue oh, on <laughs> you are killing me <laughs> okay continue on <laughs> i can't but but back to our story yeah. I think it's weird that that kid's parents are criticizing him for for loving his pet. And it's it's just, yeah, yeah, they need to get over it. And you're doing a great thing by loving your cat. Oh, my God. Ugh. There was Anywho. a great dog butchery in Paris. Stop it. There's like a big sign and it <laughs> grande <Stop>. butchery canine. <laughs> it's horrible. <laughs> this is horrible. Um, it is horrible. It is. Oh. You will hug your dog so hard today. It's just, it's, it's the worst story. Oh my God. Okay. Continue on. Under something All right. Dog so our next story, I got married in March and I've had some time to calm down, but at the time I was livid among other emotions. I shouldn't be surprised by my sister doing any of this growing up. She had to be the center of attention. We had to do what she wanted, etc. So it's my wedding day. The guest list is limited. I don't like being around many people. So we had like 24 guests, my mom and dad, his dad and stepmom, his mom had passed from cancer. My four siblings minus one, their dates, his one brother and his date, my closest two best friends in the world and their dates and his closest four, his four closest friends and their dates. Everything was going perfectly. We set our vows. And then I later learned that she appeared during our vows, but stayed hidden the she is the sister. Okay. We had our reception and that's where I thought she showed up. I was like, you know what? It's my wedding. It's fine. I'll let her crash. I still won't forgive her, but maybe she's here to make up with me. I was going to be the forgiving person, but I was wrong. We had an incident. And because of that incident, I decided to cut her off. Since people have called her a bitch and asshole and told her she shouldn't have treated me like that. I didn't tell anyone what had happened between us. Just told people that I'm not happy with her and I need my distance. So at my wedding, I'm having a good time with my husband dancing horribly. And my sister grabs me. I realize she's drunk. And so does my new husband. He tells her to go. She refuses. She calls me all types of names and tries to fight me. This is at, at a wedding. It's great. She tries to fight me. My husband takes her away before she can do any damage, but it just sucked. I'm the youngest in the family, and I'm usually the forgotten one. There's six of us, so my family had this mindset. Been to one event, you've been to them all, so I don't get any extra attention, and it was actually nice to finally have some attention. Yeah. But it sucked. I'm not surprised that she doesn't think she did anything wrong this time or the other time either, and hasn't even apologized for either of her actions. The reason I'm writing this now is because my family's telling me how I need to forgive her and that family is everything. 
And I'm just sick of constantly hearing about it. Like, why should I let somebody like that around me? Because they're family. If it was a friend, they'd tell me to cut that friend off because she's my sister. I have to forgive her. So as of now, I'm barely talking to any family members who believe in this type of mindset. It makes me sad, but I suppose it needed to happen. Wow. Yeah, I get it. There's a lot of that like, well, but they're family. Um, who fucking cares? <laughs> yeah, like, it's your sister. You know, yeah. you only have one sister or in this case, several. But yeah, many. No. Yeah, if, if they're doing bad things and they continue to pull you down, why? Like, it's like, but they're the only ones that are there for you. They're clearly not there for me. They're clearly doing harm to me. But I, I don't know. I mean, they, if you have an idyllic family, you may look at this and go, well, yeah, but most people don't have an idyllic family. There's always something going on with somebody and you're constantly trying to figure out the emotional states that they throw you into that you wouldn't put up with another human being uh, if they weren't related to you by blood. Yeah. And showing up drunk at your sister's wedding Okay, I, I guess I don't know enough about alcoholics, but is was this a stressful thing for you to even think about going to so much so that you had to be drunk? Yeah, I, I mean, people drink at weddings, obviously, especially in Wisconsin. Uh, oh God, yeah. I think most weddings in Wisconsin, 90 percent of the people are drunk. But it, but they're you know, if you're behaving, OK, whatever, you know, but if you're going to start fighting people, that's a whole other ball of no. yeah and i've seen some police reports from weddings where you know the police have been called yeah. to the reception because shit's just getting out of hand and it's usually the ones that have open bar and people uh -huh. don't know how to police themselves very very much so my favorite wedding i've ever been to the bride left the groom during the first dance what do you mean left like got in the car and left slapped oh, him no. and left what? I, I was DJing it. This is, I was, I don't know, 16, 17. And uh, it was a very white trash wedding. Uh, and they're doing their dance. I don't remember what the song was. And you can tell there's like, they're arguing as the dance is going on. Then, oh, no. Then she stands back, slaps him, <gasps> and then storms out, gets in her car, and leaves. And no one knows what happened or why. And I'm like, uh, uh -oh. <laughs> like, what do I play next? <laughs> <laughs> I'll survive. Well, Meredith, uh, well, we, we, someone requested Meredith Brooks. So we, uh, we played that, uh, and, nice. and then that would be bitch, right? Yes. And I, I, I don't know if that was appropriate or not. Uh, mm -hmm. but, um, then, uh, the, the family who was paying for all of it was like, well, we got all of our friends here. Let's just make this a party. <gasps> so we continued to play for the remainder of the evening, and it just turned into kind of a party of people dancing, and the bride never returned. Oh, I want to know how that ended. Murder, suicide. No, I don't know. <laughs> oh, just can you imagine, though? I mean, it must have been, I'm thinking, something really bad. Like, oh, hey, by the way, um, your maid of honor, I slept with her last night. Yeah, something like that. I don't know. Something bad enough for her to leave her wedding and not come back. Uh, so I'm thinking that, that probably uh, this was almost uh, 20 years ago, probably still not together um, if I were to be a betting person. But hey, you never know. I don't know how you recover from that. No. I don't really wow. think there is a way to uh, to recover from that. But uh, there you go. That's uh, going to wrap up today's episode of My Crazy Family. If you got a crazy family story, send it to us. CrazyFamPod.com is the website. Uh, or you can call in uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 833-CRAY-FAM, 833-CRAY-FAM, to share your crazy family story with us. Until next time, for Stacy, I'm Tony. Thanks for listening to My Crazy Family. Bye. My crazy, crazy family, family, my crazy family. family.